Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the 2010 13-inch MacBook Air and seeing how this 8-year-old Ultrabook holds up in 2018. So without further ado, let's get to it. The 2010 MacBook Air looks almost identical to a modern MacBook Air. It has a minimalist all-aluminum chassis that is incredibly thin even by today's standards. The design is held up very well. This laptop is also old enough to feature the iconic glowing Apple logo on the back of the screen. And it actually has useful ports. On the right, we've got mini display port, USB 2.0, and an SD card reader. And on the left, we've got MagSafe, another USB 2.0 port, a headphone jack, and a microphone. The hinge is perfectly balanced to be opened with one finger, and the display slides elegantly behind the base when open. While not backlit, the keyboard feels nice enough to type on, certainly better than other laptops at this price point, but I do wish it had a bit more key travel. As with most Apple laptops, the trackpad is spectacularly accurate and has full gesture support. This trackpad is better than most Windows laptops today, period. Taking a look at the specs here, this MacBook is the highest end 2010 model with every BTO option ticked including the 2.13 GHz Core 2 Duo CPU, 4 GB of RAM, the 13-inch 1440x900 display, and finally a 256 GB SSD. We'll kick off the performance testing with Geekbench 4 to test the CPU. And the results are in, 1538 for the single core and 2617 for the multi-core. Not too shabby by Core 2 Duo standards. Next we'll try Cinebench's CPU test. Here we can really see the CPU start to struggle. Only having two cores and no hyper-threading is a major setback in some scenarios. And the results are in. The Core 2 Duo SL9600 scores 116. As you can see, that's even less than a ULV CPU like the 3317U. Now for some graphics testing. The 256 megabyte NVIDIA GeForce GT320M managed to pull off an underwhelming 11 frames per second, so don't expect to be doing any heavy gaming. Video editing is usually a strong point on Macs, so I fired up Final Cut Pro and tried doing a quick test, but it was so unbearably slow I couldn't even stand to let it finish rendering. You might get away with editing 720p footage in iMovie, but 1080p in Final Cut Pro is a no-go. But one thing you have to keep in mind, this laptop only costs about $200 these days, and there is no modern Windows laptop for $200 that you could hope to edit videos or play demanding video games on. If you're getting a $200 laptop, you're mostly just expecting to listen to music, watch movies, check email, and browse the web. And at these tasks, this MacBook really excels. 4GB of RAM is still more than most laptops at this price point, and nothing at this price will have a 256GB SSD. So is it worth the money? Absolutely. Even if you're a Windows user, you could buy one, install Windows, and you'd still have a better machine for your money than if you went to Best Buy.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing to see what I make next. I'll see you next time.